Miami. And that is a touchback number five on the year for Kevin Harper, the young man from Mentor, Ohio. Wesley Carroll is the quarterback. They run the spread. They will show Wildcat. Carroll, the uh, transfer from Mississippi State, a junior from St. Thomas Aquinas, a great uh, program down in the Fort Lauderdale area. He'll take the direct snap, and he'll go to the wraparound fake, and he's going to keep it and get two yards and take a hard hit as he tried left tackle. And coming in there to make that hard hit is starting strong safety Dom DeSico with help from Jabal Sheard. Very good job on the fake there. Brandon Lindsay, if he would have stayed in, would have been a no-gainer, but he went right after the uh, fake, and the quarterback took it right behind him. you got to keep your thinking cap on, Brandon. Three-yard gain, second down and seven. Carroll, who stands 6-1-204, gets the snap and goes to a wraparound handoff, and this time coming up over the line of scrimmage and getting to the 29-yard line for six yards, Jeremiah Harden, the transfer from uh, Syracuse, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, sets up a third and short thanks to the tackle by strong side backer Greg Williams. Well, they pulled the right side here, and sometimes when you play these spread offenses and they come at you physically with a run, it kind of catches you off guard, and I think it did there to the Panther defensive line. It got pushed off the ball. They are a 35% team on third downs offensively. Third and one at their own 29 in that uh, spread offense. Carroll gets the snap. Goes to the wraparound handoff, and up to the 30, and to the 31 comes Darriot Perry, the junior from Valdosta, Georgia. He's 5'9", 200, a fire plug, but he gets the first down uh, on the tackle by Greg Williams and Antoine Reed. It'll be interesting to see how Max Gruder settles into this middle linebacker position now that Dan Mason is out. I think naturally that's probably his best position, but he's just always had some very good players there, and he's always been forced to the outside, so I think he'll end up doing well. Obviously, FIU does not uh, do the huddle. They kind of stand around. The play comes in from the sideline, and Harden, not Harden, but Carroll is ready to go first and 10 at his own 31. And he wants to throw it for the first time. Pocket collapses. He throws it. The pass is complete up to the line of scrimmage and maybe another yard or two. Uh, a tackle by Ricky Gary on Jeremiah Harden. Let's go to the field and John Seibel. If preparation equals performance, you kind of wonder what the performance will be like for Florida International today because their preparation was compromised because of Tropical Storm Nicole, guys. A lot of rain down there in Florida. Matter of fact, on Wednesday, they tried to go inside the Dolphins indoor practice facility, but there was a scheduling conflict, so they ended up working out inside of a gym. So the weather, somewhat of a factor, holding them back this week. We'll see if it affects their performance today. Thank you, John. Second and eight from the 33. They go to a uh, funny-looking power eye set out of that shotgun, and they hand it off. And weaving off the right side, doing a little loop-de-loop -loop as Harden. He's going to get two yards with a marker down up to the 35. Chaz Alexi, the defensive tackle, made the stop. And let's see why the marker is down. The referee from the Sun Belt Conference, Chuck Lewis. And we still are waiting to get it sorted out here. We haven't played a Sun Belt team since uh, Louisiana Monroe came in a few years back when they were southwestern Louisiana. Now they get it sorted out, and here is Chuck Lewis. Well. <laughs> Illegal block on the offense number five. 15-yard penalty, replay, second down. Wayne Times hit with an illegal block, so they're going to back him up. The ball was actually out near the 35, and let's see where they put the football after that illegal block penalty. Are they going back to the 23? Nope, back beyond that. They're going back to the 20. So it'll be second down and 21. Second and 21 is the down and distance. Four. Florida International. Out of the spread. Carroll barks away. Sidecar to his left. Slot to the wide side left. And he does a little wraparound handoff, but the blue shirts are there. Darriot Perry had no running room. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's going to lose yardage. And it's going to be back at about the 17-yard line. Miles Karajim, the first man to him, and then had backside help from Max Gruder. Yeah, they tried to pull the left guard around the center there, but just so much pe penetration by Miles and Alexi there really screwed up, and so the pulling guard was ineffective. Gruder comes in to make the tackle. Let's see what they dial up on third and 23 out of the spread. Wesley Carroll, the transfer from Mississippi State, barks away. 
He's back. Big rush. Screen pass left side. Running with the football up to the 25, the 30, the 35. And he's tackled at the 35. Darriot Perry is. After a 17-yard advance, Jason Hendricks got to him. And all that does for uh, Florida International is give him better punting position as uh, uh, they still face a fourth and about five or six. Well, we heard in the pregame their respect for our pass rush. And I think you're going to see a lot of dinks and dumps today. Very worried about Jabal Sheard, who I think at the beginning of this season has got to be playing as good as anybody in the country at the left end position. 35-yard line for punter John Brisk. That's the line of scrimmage, the former Duquesne University star. It's fielded by Cam Sadler. Breaks it up over the 35, the 40, and he's nailed as he gets to about the pit 45. Didn't have much of a crack, but he slithered through it and got a nice punt return as a result. Ball at the pit 45-yard line. Ray Graham is the tailback. He gets the call off the left side, tries to weave his way through traffic, and is going to get probably about four yards on the play up to the 49 before they get him off his feet. Ashland Parker, the strong safety, a senior from Port St. Joe, comes up to make the stop for FIU. Just in case you missed it, <laughs> Deion Lewis has got a, an injury. That's why he's not in there. It's not anything to do with any controversy. Ray Graham is in there because of the injury to Deion Lewis, and he's going to do a good job. Had the red shirt on all week at practice, meaning no contact. And didn't do a whole lot of team reps. Second man gets the call, and through the hole comes Ray. Good block by Henry Hynoski. Ray Graham is down to the 44-yard line, and that's going to be a Panther first down. Good job up front by Carabine, Jacobson, and Pinkston off that left side. Well, that power play, and it's the first opportunity we've seen Lucas Nix to get into that play as a pulling right guard. Does a good job. I think he's going to be great at it. I think it's his long-term better for him than playing out there in the tackle position. Ray Graham picks up the first. Eight yards to the 43 of FIU. I formation, now crabbing right and resettling is Hynoski. Stepping away is Tino. And he gets the play underway after a check with me. Throws the out. And it's over the intended receiver. And he is low bridge. John Baldwin is by the linebacker on that side. Weak side backer Anthony Gator. Uh, but the pass sailed over his head incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of a Brett Favre-like throw early in the game where you know Brett's all jacked up. Tends to overthrow the ball. And I'm sure Tino is a little bit excited right now. He's just got to be cool, calm, and collected and let things happen there. Jonathan tried to come up, and if he doesn't come down with you, know it's almost impossible. Second and 10, Panthers at the FIU 43. No score. First Panther possession of the game. Hynoski motions into the backfield. The handoff is to Graham. Graham off the left side. Pyle moves forward for about three yards down to the 40. And Gregory Hickman, a defensive end out of uh, Tampa, got backside help from Toronto Smith, the strong side backer, a senior from Tallahassee. And uh, they bring him down after a three-yard advance. It's third down and seven for the Panthers. Panthers, if they're going to be effective today, have to be do a better job on third down conversions. Four of, I think, 16 the last game. Not, not going to cut it. And the key to that is Tino. 31% on the year offensively. Tino in the gun. Third and seven. As a protector to his left in Ray Graham. Gets the snap. Three-man rush. He's back. He fires a pass. Incomplete. A crossing pattern intended for Mike Cruz. Thrown well behind him and dangerously close to a defender. But fortunately, it whizzed by. And the punt team is on for the Panthers. Well, they just bring three here. Kind of loose in the middle. He's got a great throwing line there. But throws it behind Cruz. If he doesn't throw it behind them, it looks like the linebacker is going to get a hand in there at the very least to knock it down and maybe even come up with the interception. So even though it's not what we want to see, that's probably the best result we could have had timeout. on that particular throw. FIU. Why would FIU call a timeout in this situation? The Panthers in punt formation with Dan Hutchins awaiting the long snap of John Figure. Well, that's a question we have to figure out. First quarter, 8.43 left. There is no score between Pitt and FIU. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. Ty Frierson is the deep man for the Golden Panthers of FIU. His heels are planted at the 10-yard line to our left. Hutchins awaiting the long snap of John Figure. Good snap. Does the rugby steps and punts it to the far corner. 
And the punt will go out of bounds inside the five-yard line at the two-and-a-half, three-yard line. Terrific job by Dan Hutchins to pin these Golden Panthers from FIU back deep in their own end. And it is quarterback Wesley Carroll, the transfer from Mississippi State, standing in his own end zone, awaiting the snap of Brad Serini. A really good center. And he's going to go to the wraparound handoff. And off the left side, it is Harden, and he doesn't get much. Maybe a yard out to the three, but maybe a half yard. Yeah, that's the second time they've tried that one. The first time they had some success because Brandon Lindsay just uh, took it took the bait hook and sinker on this one he did not and Alexi comes up with a good play but you know a lot of this is trickery some of it is physical on that one it was more trick than physical and they weren't able to trick the Panthers second and nine from the FIU three Carroll barks Carroll in his own end zone runs the handoff to the left again and this time Darriet Perry with a marker down is going to pick up about two yards out to the five and the flag came from the far sideline, but it's against the Panthers. Yeah, I think it's going to be offsides. Remember, we had a number of those. Offside, defense number 35. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. Brandon Lindsay is hit with an offside call, so it's instead of second and nine, it's going to be second and four, and the ball will be moved up to the eight-yard line. So that could change the play call for Mario Cristobal. Pre-step penalty gives them a second and middle distance. Carroll in the spread. Carroll with the cadence count. Goes to the wraparound handoff. And oh, a fake, and he throws a pass, and it's incomplete. Fake by the young man from Fort Lauderdale. Threw a long pass in the neighborhood of Wayne Times, but it was well overthrown. Coverage by Jared Holly. Let's go downstairs to John Seibel. You mentioned Jared Holly. He and Jason Hendricks are taking care of the safety position. But Dom DeSico's on the field as well, playing the linebacker spot along with Max Bruder and Greg Williams. Some have suggested that linebacker is more natural for DeSico. It also allows him to, to be kind of a nickel type of back as well with his athletic skills. So for right now, DeSico's back in, but more of a linebacker than a safety, guys. Thank you, John. FIU one for two on third downs, a third and four from their own eight. Back in the spread with a protector to his right is quarterback Wesley Carroll. Carroll retreats to his goal line to throw it. He's hit. The ball's loose. The Panthers fall on it down at the goal line. What do we have? We've got an exchange of possession here, but they're going to call it a touchdown. Jabal Sheard appeared to end up with the football. Yeah, I don't know. Brandon Lindsay came in from the back, and he hit the quarterback. Touchdown! He hit the quarterback, and I can't tell unless we see a replay whether his arm was moving forward or not. And then Jabal Sheard came in to recover the ball and score the touchdown, at least for the time being. The hit by Lindsay. And Karajine is going to end up getting the touchdown. He was at the bottom of the pile. Sheard fell on the ball, then it came loose in the scrum, and Karajine comes out of the pile with the football. Lindsay caused it. It did come loose on from the Sheard's play, grasp. Offside, defense number 35. The penalty was hit in the first down. You gotta be kidding. Lindsay is accused of being offsides twice in a row, and the Panthers lose a touchdown. Wow. Yeah, now, Brandon. Referee, referee Chuck Lewis, excuse me, Billy, is, I thought he was going to go, oh, he's just going to go talk to the far sideline. No, he's going to put the headset on and talk to whatever happened upstairs. Here's Sunbelt. After review, referee. the previous play stands, first and 10, FIU. I don't know what they reviewed. If it's offside, it's elementary, my dear Watson. Well, Brandon Lindsay, the right end, trying to get the edge on the pass rush could have lined up offsides according to the official he did not that uncommon for somebody trying to get every advantage they can at that position on the left tackle so breathing room for the FIU offense they're at their own 13 Myers coach lines is the official coach line of Pitt athletics and a proud sponsor of Pitt football West Carroll back there in the spread 
goes to the wraparound handoff and coming forward for about two yards is Valdosta Georgia product Darriot Perry who stands 5'9", 200 but the waiting arms of Greg Williams are there it'll be second down and eight hey, TJ Clemmings coming in for Lindsay there saw his first action got rid of the red shirt last week played about 20 plays and did pretty good only his second or third year of football so he's got a big upside there came in on a tackle one stunt there and disrupted helped the Panthers shut that down to a two yard game double slot to the wide side right second and eight FIU from their own 15 and they hand it off on the wraparound and getting maybe a couple of yards is Jeremiah Harden a transfer from Syracuse who stands 5'9", 200. And there to greet him were a host of blue shirts, including Chaz Alexi. You know, when you look at the Panthers' schedule, really the only team that's similar to the Panthers' offense with a fullback is Connecticut. Everybody else is a lot of spread, and I think that's why you're going to see Don DeSico settle in. You can call it a linebacker position. It's kind of a nickelback, and I think, you know, with that spread offense, he's very well suited to help the Panthers. FIU third down and five from their own 18. They're one for two on third downs. In the spread, Carroll is back. Big rush, throws a screen pass left flat. Pulling it in and running with it and being tackled short of the lead stick is a marker down. Dar Darian Mallory, a running back, who is a sophomore from Miami. And he's tackled by Dom DeSico. Did you see a marker? I, no, I think that, that, that was something loose down there. Maybe a shoe. Yeah, this is a great open field tackle. Exactly what I was trying to say, why he's perfect in that position and bringing him up like that, especially with Holly and Hendricks playing as well as they are in the, sec in the uh, safety position. Cam Sadler is back to receive this punt by John Brisk. And he lets it bounce. And it's going to take a FIU bounce inside the pit 40 and be uh, pinned dead at the 37-yard line. Well, in the first quarter, it's been interesting. 5-14 left. FIU, the Golden Panthers, the Pit Panthers, scoreless at this juncture. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pit ISP Sports Network. First and 10, Panthers after that 43-yard punt at their own 37. Toss sweep to the far side. Trying to turn the corner is Ray Graham. He's only going to get a yard. Spun out of bounds. Good speed on defense by free safety Jonathan Cyprian, a sophomore from North Miami Beach. And a player for FIU is down. He was hit by Jordan Gibbs and still is down on his knees in front of the Golden Panthers bench far side of the field. Since Harry out of the eye, gives to Ray Graham, runs downhill, steps through tackles up over the 40, the 45 to the 48-yard line. Needed nine, got ten, tripped up by Jonathan Cyprian, the free safety. Well, you got to feel good for Ray Graham. You know, he had that great attitude all last year. He was more highly recruited than Dion, basically, but Dion, you know, did so well. Ray Graham just kept a smile on his face, kept working hard. Now another opportunity that he's going to try and take advantage of, and looks like he very well will do a good job of that today. Panthers go two tights, redeploy both of them to the left side, the short side, on first and ten at the 48. The give to Ray, but he's tripped up after a yard advance to the 49. Tripped up by Ashland Parker, strong safety. And so it'll be second down and long. The ball shy of the 50-yard line by a yard. Yeah, we went right back to that power play again. And they sniffed it out. They saw it coming. And they walked the linebackers up. And even the safety came in as well. No score. We're winding to 358 left first quarter between Pitt and FIU. This is the Panthers' second drive of the game. FIU has had the ball twice. Now the Panthers shift into a one-back look. They call Hynoski in from the left. And back is Tino to throw it. It's a little swing pass with the ball. Ray Grant, shake and bake, gets by his man. Oh, and if he doesn't get tripped up at the 35-yard line, he might have been gone. Left defensive end, Tarek Williams, a sophomore from Miami, may have saved the touchdown with that trip tackle. You know, you talk to the coaches, and what's the difference between Ray and, <laughs> and Dion? And here in the flat, you see it. He is more elusive, actually bigger than Dion, but he's a guy that just fakes people out in the open field. And you saw that on this play. Like you said, if he didn't get tripped up, I think it's six. Tino's first completion, 17 yards. Ray Graham gets the call off the left side, and he's going to get maybe four down to the 30. 
And that's where Toronto Smith, the strong side backer, a senior from Tallahassee, makes the stop. So the Panthers face a second and six as they have their deepest penetration of the game down to the FIU 30-yard line. Eight carries for 48 yards for Ray Graham. Looks well on his way to another 100-yard performance. Came in averaging 9.3 yards per carry, but six is not bad. Second and six. One back look. Tino surveys. Calls Hynoski in from the right. And now we have a flag down, and let's see why. Is this going to be an illegal shift? Or delay of game. Ball start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Now they hit Jason Pinkston with a procedure call. So it's second and 11. At the 35. Panthers with some pre-snap problems here. Two on defense and now one on offense. One on defense cost a potential touchdown. That was taken off the board by an offside call against Brandon Lindsay. Tino out of an eye formation. Everything in fairly tight. Second and 11. Back to throw it. He waits. He throws it long down the field for Baldwin. That pass will be out of the end zone incomplete. Baldwin had a step on two defenders, but Tino overthrew him beyond the chalk line. Just a hair too, too long here. Decent protection on his front side, but he's about to get nailed right as he's getting rid of this football. Didn't really affect the throw. Just a hair too long. Jonathan beats double coverage. If he could have got rid of that ball a shade earlier and, a, and underthrew it just a shade, that could have been six. Chuck Grace was the man who was trying to defend him. That's a mismatch, but it sets up a third down and 11. The ball at the 35 of FIU. Tino surveys with a one back look. Now FIU shows blitz, and here they come. And Tino's going to throw the out, and it's pulled in by Shanahan. Spins away from a man inside the 25, and he gets down to about the 23 for a Panther first down. Emmanuel Sawarin, the cornerback on that side, was totally mismatched. Good job up front. They were walking guys around trying to create confusion. Tino had adequate time, throws it out in the flat to Shanahan, and Mike should have been tackled as soon as he caught the ball. No first down, but showed the toughness to run out of the would-be tackler to pick up the first down. First and 10 at the 23, a 12-yard gain from Sanceri to Shanahan. High formation, one receiver outside is up top, and they're going to go to him. Fade pattern, far corner of the end zone. Baldwin is here, and Baldwin is going to end up not catching the ball. Baldwin had gotten a step on that weak side backer, Anthony Gator, and now Baldwin gets up slowly in the end zone. Yeah, and it looks like he's holding his head. That was a good throw. Jonathan now running seems to be okay. But uh, that looks to be one that Jonathan, you'd think, would come down with more often than not. Now the Panthers bring Shanahan to the near side. That's the left side. FIU shows blitz. And the give through the middle. Ray Graham inside the 20 down to about the 17 for six yards. Ashland Parker, the strong safety, got him down at about the 16-yard line. Make it a seven-yard gain. Well, one area when you look at the Panthers this year and why they've struggled, it's been in the red zone, Bill. We have not come away with touchdowns. We've come away with field goals at best, and that's really, you know, heartbreak. Now we're in there once again. Got to come away with a touchdown. Third and three. Tino roll out, dumps it off in the flat. With the first down pickup is John Baldwin, the junior from Aliquippa. And you know what? I hadn't seen that thrown all year, that play. Well, that, that was similar to the uh, two-point uh, extra point that we scored against. Uh, was that Utah where he hit Jonathan the flat? He came in motion there. Similar, he rolls to the right and drills it in there. I mean, I like to see Tino rolling out of the pocket. I think that's another dimension that he can do well. Finds Jonathan out in the right flat. Panthers now in the Heinz red zone. This red zone is a drug-free zone brought to you by Drug-Free Workplace Solutions, building a better workplace one employee at a time. First and goal at the nine, and now this play is whistled down. And apparently there was movement up front. Point of snap, false start offense, number one. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. 
The red zone is no place to get pre-snap penalties. Fourth penalty on the Panthers, all offsides. So instead of first and goal at the nine, it'll be first and goal at the 14-yard line. Ray Graham just leaving a split second too soon. And that'll be the final play of the opening quarter. We've reached the end of the first quarter here at Heinz Field with a score. The University of Pittsburgh, nothing. Florida International University, nothing. We'll be back with more Panthers football right here on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. Panthers have had the ball over five minutes. This is the 11th play of the drive. First and goal at the Florida International 14. And the give to Ray Graham, but he's going to be hammered in the hole and only get a yard to the 13. As they tried to run him off left tackle, but stepping into the gap was Jonathan Sipri in the free safety. Let's go downstairs to John Seibel. Bill, everybody likes to talk about the glamour boys, the quarterbacks, but I'm living in the Bill Fralick realm right now. I've been watching Jordan Gibbs on every single one of Tino's attempts, and I've got it at eight guys. And so far, I have Jordan Gibbs as being a perfect eight for eight in pass protection, and trust me, I'm a pretty tough critic. Second down and goal from 13 and a half yards away. A one-back look. Tino surveys, redeploys the tight end to the right side, slot to the wide side left. Four on the huddle clock as he steps back in. He's going to throw a timing pattern, far left corner, and it is pulled in, out of bounds by Jonathan Baldwin. He had a step on the defender, but when he came down with the football, after it sailed over uh, Jose Cheeseboro's head, it was out of bounds incomplete. Yeah, quick two-step drop. Tino sails it up there just a little bit. Ah, you know what? It was a good throw. It was a good throw on his part there. Jonathan's momentum just took him out as he was coming down with the football. Panthers are one for two on third down situations, but this is third and goal at the 13. Five men on the line of scrimmage for FIU and three behind them. Now the shotgun for Tino on third and goal from the 13. He's back. He waits. He's hit and the ball comes out. And they're going to say it was a forward pass incomplete. And that'll bring the field goal unit on. Firing through was Casey Smith, a defensive tackle, to hit Tino just as he raised the ball to come forward. And as his arm came forward, that's when the blow was delivered. And that's why the pass was incomplete. Yeah, he's fortunate that he just got that ball out of there at the last second and got his arm moving forward because it very easily could have been called a fumble if he just didn't get that last little bit going. Dan Hutchins to try a 30-yard field goal from the right hash mark. Janoko is the holder. Figure is the snapper. The ball is down. The kick by Hutchins on its way. That kick is up. And the 30-yarder is good. Hutchins now 6 for 9 on the year. And the Panthers break the ice. 14-0-2 to go second quarter with a score of 3-0 Pitt. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. Kevin Harper to kick it away. And they have a double return tandem at about the three-yard line. That would be Harden and Times for the Golden Panthers of FIU. Not much wind to worry about. The streamer is fairly inactive. Both end zones. Here's Harper to kick it high, but not real deep. Taking it at the 10 is Times to the 15. Still on his feet at the 20, and he's down at about the 25-yard line. And now Carroll will go empty set. He's back there by himself from his own 25-yard line. And he wants to throw it. He looks right, nothing there. So he rolls right, and he throws it to the sideline away. Incomplete. Threw it right into the FIU bench. Jabal Sheard was up in his face, and I think he said, you know, I'm going to take an incomplete pass here. Yeah, I really think he's played really well all year, though. Maybe not so much against Utah. It is more Utah than him, but the last few weeks he just played like a man possessed once they no notified everybody that Greg Romeus was going to be out for some time. I think he's tried to take this defense on his shoulders. Wesley Carroll stands in the spread. Sidecar to his left. And that is Mallory. And he gets the low shotgun snap. Going to swing it out left flat to Mallory. Steps out of one tackle. Comes up to about the 30 for five. And gets hammered there. Not, not Mallory, but Harden uh, gets hammered there by Max Gruder. So it'll be third down and five. Yeah, DeSico turned him in there. Did a great job showing the speed. Turn him in, in, turning him into Gruder. Gruder made the tackle. And a good one in the open field. 
FIU one for three on third downs, as are the Panthers in this game. Third and five from their 30. Carroll in the shotgun. Harden to his right. Now a receiver motions to the near side and settles in the slot to the wide side. There's the snap on third and five. Big rush. He throws a pass and it's complete. The tight end has it for a first down. Well, that's not a tight end. That's 6'4", Greg Ellingson, a senior wideout from Tampa. But he had it as he angled to the left numbers and got it out to the 41 for 11 yards. Greg Williams made the stop. They went with a quick rhythm pass that time. All day to throw it. Now Harden throws it down the field, and it is complete up at about the 50-yard line. And that is a pass completion from the quarterback to the intended receiver, Times, tackled by Jason Hendricks. That's going to be about a nine-yard game. Well, they saw what Fitz Miami gave us last week with the no huddle, and I think they're getting into a little bit of rhythm right now. He had all day to throw that one, second and one at midfield. Now he has an audible, communicates the audible, and sets back in the spread formation. Carroll gets the snap. Wrap around handoff and running the football for a first down and more is Darriot Perry. Found a lane off the left and got inside the 45 and they don't tackle him till he gets to the pit 40 yard line. Max Gruder uh, ended that 10 yard run. Well, they're beginning to get into a little rhythm because Carroll made a couple good throws. Now it's opened up the running game a little bit. Got us thinking. Back is Harden, and he pass, he, he completes a pass to Ellingson again. Ellingson, a big target, tackled quickly by Max Gruder, but the advance is down to about the 30-yard line. And is that enough for a first down? It is. Another 10-yard FIU gain to the pit 30. They work quickly in a rhythm, timing pattern, left sideline. The pass will be incomplete. Step for step with that wide receiver Ellingson, who suddenly here in the second quarter become a factor, was Ricky Gary, the senior from Pahokee. Incomplete, second and ten. Not only was he step for step, but he had good inside position, able to look back and make a play on this ball, not looking at the receiver at the last second and possible face guarding. Great job by him to go step for step on man coverage. Second down and ten, three nothing Panthers, but FIU on the march. And rolling the pocket is Carroll, and he finds a receiver, but a good tackle on that receiver, Junior Mertiel, the sophomore from Miami. By the Panthers, Antoine Reed ran right through him. The gain is going to be for five to the 25. It'll be third down and five. Panthers' pa pass rush has been non-existent here in this drive. They roll to the right to get away from Lindsey there, but a great open field tackle by Antoine Reed, who I think has played pretty well all year, Bill. FIU two for four on third downs, third and five at the pit 25. They motion to an empty set. Carroll back there by himself. And there's movement by the right tackle. And it's going to be third and ten. Now Jabal sheared. I, Jabal came in, but I thought the right tackle moved. Now whose responsibility? Apparently the Panthers. And it's going to be a first down if that's the case. Before the snap, offside, defense number 97. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So it wasn't quite the full five yards. It was five yards, and they needed five and a half. So it's going to be third down in inches at the pit 20-yard line. After Sheard goes offside. And when I saw the right tackle move, I saw his reaction to Sheard coming in, bearing down on his quarterback. Third and inches. They're going to stay in that spread. And they go to the wraparound handoff. And running straight ahead for the first down is going to be the FIU Golden Panther. And that is Darriot Perry. And FIU is in the red zone with a first down. That is a virtual dive play for the uh, spread. Great job of running downhill. The Panthers got caught a little bit off guard there. Got Great movement FIU did in the center of the offensive line. First and 10 at the 17. They stay in the spread. They go without a huddle. Double slot to the wide side left. Carroll, the quarterback, takes the snap. He's back with time. Now the pocket collapses. 
And he's going to run out of there to the right, being chased. Oh, there's a cut block on the flank, and he is knocked out of bounds far side as he gets inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. Jabal Sheard forced him out far sideline. Great coverage downfield. The pocket collapsed around him. He stepped up into it, and everybody kind of disappeared, and then all of a sudden turned around and ran back out. It reminded me of the Eli uh, Manning play back in the Super Bowl a few years ago. He made a good run around the end there. Jabal comes out to make the tackle, but a little bit too late. Second and six at the 13. Five penalties have hurt the Panthers' cause. They still cling to that 3 nothing lead. Wraparound draw handoff, and that is going to be Harden. And Harden grinds to about the 10-yard line for three, setting up a third down and three at the Panther 10-yard line. Panthers up three to nothing, but Florida International has marched the ball from their 25 down to the Panther 10. Where it is now third down and three. Almost four. Scoreboard is calling it four. They're saying it's at the 11-yard line. We'll agree with them. Harden with a protector to his right. Changes the play. Communicates the change. Steps back. Yep, and they're going to either call a timeout or they're going to have a penalty, and I do believe FIU timeout. has called FIU. It's second timeout. 9.05 to go, second quarter, with a score of 3-0 Pitt. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. And it's third down and almost four at the Pitt 11-yard line. They are three for five on third downs offensively. FIU with the football. Carroll runs to his left and goes to the end around right running with the football to the 5-4-3 and down to the one yard line is Wayne Times but he's going to get a first and goal Justin Hargrove kept him out of the end zone so they go to a razzle dazzle as he started to roll to his left and then handed off to the man coming around and that is Times yep time in motion he flips out to him Hargrove in for the tired Jabal Sheard gets sucked in gets the current torn corner turned on him too little too late but did keep him out of the end zone they'll stay with the spread first and goal at the panther one after the end around now they go to the wraparound and they've got a touchdown roaring through the hole is dariot perry his third rushing touchdown of the year and fiu goes on top fiu got some plays from the quarterback carroll on that drive then got some rhythm going and then shaking it up with a little bit of pass a little bit of run here it's just ran right into the end zone nobody even touched him so the big play was a third and four end around handoff from the quarterback Carroll to times that gained 10 yards down to the one the extra point try is on its way and the extra point by Griffin is up and good he's nine for nine on the year and FIU has the lead we have 835 left second quarter with a score Florida International seven the Panthers three We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. Well, they've got 25 plays, 108 yards, Bill, to our 18 plays and 75 yards. And to boot, they got seven points. We got three. Dylan Lynch kicks it off on 13 so far this year. He's got two touchbacks. And he's going to kick a pooch. And the Panthers are ready for it. And they take it at their own 35. Ducking a tackle and running forward is one of the up men. And the Panthers get the ball with good field position. As pulling that ball in and ducking a would-be hard tackle was Marco Pecora, a defensive back out of, uh, was it Mark? Yeah, Marco Pecora from Johnstown, Rich Richland High School. An alert play by the young man from Richland, a Richland Ram. Gives the Panthers the football first and 10 at their own 45, trailing 7-3. Tino Sinceri lines him up in an eye formation. Play action fake, he's back. Throws pass incomplete. Not even close to Ray Graham in the right flat. And uh, Tino having a tough day. He is now two for nine. Pressure from Toronto Smith may have caused that incompletion. Yeah, they had four linemen up there, and they were walking two linebackers in the A and B gap there. Then they shot the one in the A in the B gap, and uh, Lucas Nix got beat to the outside by him. Didn't really pick him up. Forced 
Tino to throw that ball off balance. Really no shot. Wasn't Tino's fault. And completion stops the clock at 827. Second down at 10. The Panthers from their own 45. And they hand it off to Ray Graham. Bounces it out to the left. He's on his way and gets across the 45 down to the 42-yard line. Ashland Parker tripped him up. If Parker doesn't make that play, he could have gone a lot a longer distance. But as it is, it is a Panther first and 10 across midfield. Well, we faked the pass there. Hynoski sets up the pass block. They, then they hand off to Graham, and he kind of follows him right around. I think he fooled the defensive end there, or defensive line for a split second there. Good fake by uh, Tino to boot. 14-yard gallop by Graham to the 41 of FIU. Sinceri, one back look. Hynoski in a blocking position. Bubble screen left, and he blocks for... No, it's, it's actually Hynoski pulled it in as the tight end block for Hynoski. I got a little bit fooled up on that one. Cyprian made the stop. The gain is from the 41 down to the 34-yard line for seven yards. Yeah, we're used to Henry doing the blocking and not the catching, but he got some uh, payback on that one, able to uh, tuck the ball and run with it. Second down three, the Panthers at the 34-yard line of FIU. Panthers of Pitt trail by four. Sinceri redeploys tight ends to each side and now Shanahan moves into the slot right wide side now he motions to left and balances the formation and the give is to Graham and Graham steps through a tackle bounces it to his right picks up a block at the 25 20 15 10 touchdown Ray Graham somersaults into the end zone and the Panthers get the lead back John Baldwin threw the block downfield that allowed Graham to complete the run a 34 yard scamper that started to the left went to the middle ended up going right for the score well just a great job by Jonathan Baldwin to get into this guy down the field this power was set up to go to the left he gets some penetration in there so he cuts it back to the right but he helps Jonathan by some head fakes and helps Jonathan make his block turns a defender in for a split second and he turns the ultimate corner and flies into the end zone and Hutchins trying to go seven for seven on extra points does and the Panthers recapture the lead 702 left second quarter with a score the Pitt Panthers 10 FIU 7 We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. Here's Kevin Harper with the kickoff. It's on the field of play. And taken at the 10. Behind the wedge at the 15 comes Times. And Times is hit hard as he gets to the 23-yard line. The ball may have come out. Let's see. There's a marker down along the 24-yard line. But let's see. The Panthers have the ball. But why is the marker down? Antoine Reed with a wicked hit. And the Panthers come up with it. Taglianetti end up with a football, I do believe. Yeah, I couldn't see it. It's not a flag down there. What is that? Another beanbag. They've fooled the me dreaded, twice with beanbags <laughs> the today. beanbag red flag. So Times fumbles on the hit by Reed. And the Panthers come up with the football. Taglianetti is credited with the fumble recovery. And now, upstairs, wants to take a look Previous at it. play is under further review. So Bob Welch, the Big East replay official, who's in control of the situation, will talk to Sunbelt referee Chuck Lewis. With 6.58 to go, second quarter, Pitt leading 10-7. This has the opportunity. After further review... The runner's forearm was down at the 24-yard line. Ball is first and 10 for FIU. So the ground did cause the fumble. It is ruled. And FIU retains possession. Two he big turnovers the Panthers got overturned. One by an offside. This one by a camera. So the Panthers just have to plug away and try to do something about solving this spread offense led by Wesley Carroll, who shows an empty set on first down at the FIU 24-yard line. Double slot to the wide side left, two receivers to the right. Carroll gets the snap. He's back. Now, late rush, and he throws it incomplete. Dropped by the running back, Jeremiah Harden, up and around the 30-yard line. 
And the Panthers were uh, in the backfield and had late pressure on Harden, but the pass was definitely catchable. Sheard had the heat, and so did Lindsey, but uh, Harden dropped it at second down and 10. And it may have been tipped uh, slightly by Max Gruder in the middle before it got to the drop. Now he has a protector to his left, does Wesley Carroll on second and 10 from the FIU 24. Three receivers to the wide side left. He's going to roll the pocket left. Throw it on the run. The pass is caught near sideline. That is Martile. And they're going to say no. He didn't catch the ball. He, he never, because of the hit by Don DeSico, he never got possession of the football. As he rolls out to the left there, makes a good throw on the run. DeSico comes over, and the ball's never really caught. And he, he jars it loose, falls to the ground as he knocks the receiver. Merrill out of bounds. Third down and 10 from the 24 of FIU. They are four for six on third downs. Panthers show blitz. Carroll Barks takes the shotgun snap. Screen pass to the left side and running with the football. And the Panthers are not going to get to him. And he's going to get a first down. And that's Mallory, the running back, who was in the left flat. Jabal Sheard had to track him down. The gain is from the 24 out to the 35-yard line of first down. Panthers fooling around with the three-down lineman in the middle. Miles Carragin actually standing up, walking around. Get decent pressure here, but he finds his outlet. And he makes a very good run to pick up the first down. Greg Williams misses an open field tackle that would have kept him short. And now this play is whistled down. Referee Chuck Lewis throwing the flag. And let's see uh, what the penalty ball snap. is. Ball start offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, still first down. It's backup right tackle, Cedric Davis, a freshman from Jacksonville. And so that's going to cost them five yards and set up a first and 15 back at the 30. The second penalty called against FIU. 10-7 Panthers. Second quarter clock winds to 6-13. As Wesley Carroll barks away with a sidecar to his right. Out of that spread offense for the Golden Panthers from down in the Miami area. Now he's going to fake the pass and hand it off on the wraparound to Harden. And Harden's going to pick his way up for about two yards to the 32. Greg Williams, first man to greet him. The strong side backer out of Naples, Florida. And that'll bring up second, and we'll call it 13. Greg was doing everything he could to try and rip that ball loose. Good job by FIU to hold on to it. The rest of the Panthers come over to help make the tackle as Greg was trying to jar that loose. Second down and 13. All at the FIU 32-yard line. Two receivers each way. Out of the spread. Carroll. Counts his cadence. Gets the shotgun snap. Is back. Throws it. And the pass is complete. Down the middle. And getting by a tackler is Younger. Jacob Younger, a sophomore from Titusville, Florida. And he's finally tackled by Jared Holly. And that's going to be enough for the first down. It looks like Ricky Gary is limping off the field. So the ball is spotted at the 46. They needed 13. They got 14 on the play to Jacob Younger. And this time they go to the wraparound, and the Panthers aren't fooled, and it's going to be no gain on the play as Harden went forward, but Justin Hargrove, the junior defensive end from Baldwin at 6'4", 270, he pinched down and made the stop. Clemmings as well, big recruit out of New Jersey in there as well, getting some valuable experience. Second down and 10 from the 46. This pass is caught across midfield at the 47 by Younger. And he is knocked down at the 46-yard line. A gain of eight, it's third and two. Reed and DeSico make the stop for the uh, Panthers. You know, Carroll's having a pretty good day, 11 of 16, 85 yards. Very consistent, does a lot of different things and does them well. When given time, he may has a very accurate ball, and he's had a lot of that in the last two drives. Third and two, FIU trailing by three at the pit 46. They are five for seven on third downs this time. Carroll has two protectors and does an audible and communicates the audible, and the sideline is going to call a timeout, and if that is an FIU timeout, that's their third and final of the first half. 3.54 to go, second quarter, with a score, Pitt 10, FIU 7. 
This one started at their 24. They're at the pit 30, uh, 46 with a third and two. Two protectors. And Carroll goes to the wraparound handoff, and the Panthers stand up. Jeremiah Harden. Great job by Max Gruder making that stand-up tackle after an advance of one yard. It's fourth and one. FIU is 0 for 5 on fourth downs this year. Are they going to go for it at the pit 45? Well, great job as well by the defensive tackles. Miles Carragine, Chaz Alexi, slant both of them to the right, recognize what's coming on, come back into the gap there and help Max make the tackle. It's fourth and one in the spread. Carroll now has a check with me, and he communicates that. Steps back in. At the pit 45 on fourth and one, he gets the snap. And he hands it off, and running wide for the first down easily is Perry. And he's knocked out of bounds on the far sideline after a pretty good gallop down to the pit 35. Needed one, got 10, and the Panther defense is back on its heels. Great job by that offensive line. I thought they were more driven by the uh, quick release of the quarterback. But not only they've done a great job pass blocking today, they've done a really good job run blocking on occasion. Here the right side just pushes our guys right off the line of scrimmage. The ball sheared really got caught off balance there. So the 10 yard gain keeps the drive alive. FIU trailing by three. First and 10 at the pit 35. Big rush and he throws the ball in the flat and it's dropped in the left flat by the tight end. And that is Jonathan Foucher, a junior from Weston, Florida. He got one hand on it. Was a little bit overthrown because of the pressure, but easily catchable at second down and 10. Yeah. Greg Williams on the blitz. Dom DeSico on the blitz. Up in the face of quarterback Carroll. And they had Brandon Lindsay trying to come out in the flat and he was beat. Imagine that a defensive end. Him beat by the back, but it was just a hair overthrown. So it's second down and 10. The incompletion stops the clock at 242. No timeouts left for FIU. And they have a running look right now from the spread, but they fake it. And back after the play action fake is Carroll running around. He's waiting. He's going to throw the ball to the popcorn vendor. As there was late pressure, and he just said, I don't have anybody open. Jabal Sheard was uh, right there with him, and it's out of bounds, incomplete. It'll be third down and 10 at the pit 35. Panther defensive line looks pretty winded. Here was the same play they picked up the first down on, or at least it appeared to be, but he kept the ball this time and of handing it off to the back and then tried to get downfield, but the Panthers secondary did a great job of holding on to the coverage, ended up just throwing the ball away after the pressure. FIU, 24 plays this quarter, the Panthers seven. Third and 10. They roll the pocket left. He plants, does Carroll. He sidesteps the tackler, starts back to the other side. Throws the ball down the field as a man open, and that's a first down inside the 20 at the 15-yard line. First reception for T.Y. Hilton of the game, but it's a big one as he got open. Carroll rolling the pocket left and then breaking and throwing back against it. Yeah, they use the back to help chip on and help the left tackle here on Lindsay. He knocks him, and Miles Kerrigan coming from the backside just took a little bit of a bad angle. Carroll recognized, stepped away to pick up the big first down. Third and 10, and they pick up 19. Come out, pit. So the that Panthers first time out. call a timeout to stop the clock at 2:13. FIU without timeouts has a first and 10 at the pit 16. Panthers have two timeouts remaining. FIU on the march first and 10 at the pit 16. Carroll surveys sidecar to his left. Working this spread offense beautifully. Wrap around handoff and off the right side not much going. That is Harry and Ma Mallory and he is running into some blue shirts and one of those TJ Clemmings. Aaron Donald also the other uh, true freshman doing a great job in there. Both of those guys are going to be superstars down the road, I think. Second and nine at the 15. Back is Carroll. Late rush. He's going to be up oh, out of there. Now he's going to throw the ball to the near far sideline, and it is caught on the far sideline at about the 15 yard line by T.Y. Hilton. That's going to be no gain on the play, but he stopped the clock by getting out of bounds with a minute 43 left. Holly forced him out. Here in the second quarter, it's going to be third down, and, well, they give him forward progress to what? About the 12, so it's third down and six. The first guy missed him. If they can get him there, that would have been a big play out of field goal range, but that possibility is still there. Third and six at the 12. Empty set for quarterback Wesley Carroll. He's back there by himself. 
He'll get the shotgun snap. And he's going to run it himself. And the play whistled down. Let's see why. I think you're going to have another offsides. Hargrove's time. Or was it T.J. Clemmings? We'll wait and see. Too many pre-stamp penalties. Prior to the snap. Offside defense number 96. Five-yard penalty. You were right. Down. Justin Hargrove is ruled offside. And so that makes it a little easier. Third and one at the pit seven-yard line with 140 to go. And remember, FIU has no timeouts, and when you go offside, you're stopping the clock for it. Panthers clinging to a three-point lead, but FIU on the march. It's the fourth Panther defensive end to go offside. Carroll in the gun. Perry to his left. Third and one at the seven. And he goes to the wraparound draw, and the Panthers are there. And it's going to be a two-yard loss for Perry as Jason Hendricks blitzed and tagged his man at about the nine and a half. It's fourth down. Panthers walk the safeties up, then Hendricks shoots in there. I'll tell you what, he's a playmaker between he and Hawley. They're both in the right place all the time, and they make plays when they have an opportunity. They take the most out of it, and here he makes the tackle in the backfield for the loss. Griffin, two of three on the year, will be trying a field goal of 24 yards from near the right hash mark. The ball down and Griffin's kick is on its way that kick is up and good and we have a tie game with a minute one left of the second quarter Dylan Lynch will kick it off freshman from Jacksonville Beach and he sends the left foot through and the boot is going to the far sideline picked there by the Panthers Graham at the 5 to the 10 15 still on his feet at the 20 through a hole at the 25 and down at the 27 yard line in pit territory with 54 seconds left of the half Chuck Grace, the backup weak side backer, got him off his feet. Well, ruled at the 28-yard line with 54 seconds left of the second quarter. The Panthers have two timeouts at their disposal. Give FIU credit. They engineered the field goal drive of uh, some, uh, let's see, about 66 yards. Griffin's 24-yarder, but uh, they did most of it after expending their third and final timeout. Ready for play as indicated. Tino Sinceri lines him up in an eye formation from his own 28. Slot to the wide side left. Shanahan in the slot. Inoski crabs left. Tino is back. He's going to throw it down the field. The pass is pulled in by Shanahan. First down at the 45. Pulled in in front of the defender who had good coverage. That's Cheeseboro, the corner on that side. <laughs> Cheeseboro saw that ball coming. He thought he had an interception. I mean, he was ready to take that back to the house. And all of a sudden, Shanahan came back and took it right away from him. Panthers take a long time to call a timeout. Clock winds to 39 seconds. When they snapped the ball, there were 54 seconds. So the Panthers now, after that 17-yard gain, have a first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Sanseri under center with a broken eye to the right. He's back. A little screen pass to the right. Ray Graham is going to be hit after about a two-yard gain up to the 47. And the clock winds to 30 seconds. Panthers have to hurry now if they're going to try to get into field goal range. It'll be second and eight. I'll call it second and nine at the 47. And the Panthers spike the ball to clock it at 20 seconds, facing a third and long. Tino in the gun is back. He's going to throw it down the field. Shanahan has a crossing pattern, 30, 25. And with 13 seconds left, they're going to have to move the sticks, and the Panthers are going to have to spike this one. Terrific job of running that crossing pattern by Mike Shanahan. They line up, they give ready for play, and Tino's going to spike it with 12 seconds left. Now that was a well-thrown ball there. Had no pressure whatsoever. Stepped up into the pocket because of a great block by Ray Graham. Allowed him to do so and hit Shanahan in stride. 11 seconds to go. Second down and 10. The Panthers at the 35. I mean at the 25 of FIU. 
after the 28-yard pass play to Shanahan. 11 seconds left. Tino wanted to set up a, a shovel pass, and he fakes it, and he runs, and he gets to the 22-yard line. Panthers have to call a timeout quickly, and this will be a long field goal attempt for Pitt. I think he wanted to set up a shovel pass there, and it wasn't available, so he had to keep it. Four seconds left of the second quarter. Trying to unsnap the tie as we head toward halftime. Good snap, ball down, kick by Hutchins on its way. That kick's got the leg, that kick's got the accuracy, and his longest field goal of the year on the final play of the second quarter gives Dan Hutchins and the Panthers the halftime lead. At halftime, the Panthers lead it 13 to 10. We'll be back with the UPMC Health Plan halftime report. You're listening to Pitt Football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. They'll kick it off right to left. Dylan Lynch, freshman from Jacksonville Beach at 6'3", 215. Will favor the left hash mark as he kicks it from the 30-yard line to our right, the 30-yard line toward the Ohio River. Panthers deep to receive Cam Sadler and Ray Graham. Graham has returned two kickoffs this year for 23.5 coming in. That's his average. And this one will be fielded by Graham at the 5, middle to the 10. At the 15, through a hole, 25, 30, 35, cuts it back to the left at 40, needs a block, gets it, gets it at the 50, sidesteps a man to the right, and then the Wash catches him, and he is down at the 44-yard line of the Golden Panthers of FIU. Ray Graham, an exciting kickoff return as he dashed and dotted his way across midfield. This is a great run. He kept cutting it back, looking to buy more time and get down the field and find an opening, and it worked most of the time eventually. Florida caught up to him, but after a huge gain and some good blocking, and when you get guys cutting back in against the grain, sometimes you get guys that want to stick their hands out and hold to keep the guy from coming back, but the, off, or the blockers did not do that and allowed him to maximize that without a penalty. By far, the Panthers' biggest kickoff return of the year, 52 yards to the 43 of FIU. Tino sets him up in a one-back look. Calls Hynoski in from the left. And he hands it off to Graham off the left side. He's running downhill inside the 40, inside the 35, down to the 33, and he's close to a first down. He's got a first down near the 32-yard line. Middle linebacker Winston Fraser, a sophomore from Miami, makes the stop for FIU. Just zone block and following Hynoski up through the hole. Great job by Carabin to get movement there. You know, we talked about Jabal Sheard sticking his tongue out, being exhausted in the second quarter. I bet Ray Graham is feeling a little bit after those two big runs. Panthers break to the eye to the boundary left. They hand it to Graham. He's through a hole off the left side, and he grinds his way inside the 30, down to about the 27 for five yards. And getting to him as he went to his left from the right side is cornerback Jose Cheeseboro, redshirt freshman from Jacksonville in run support. Well, we are much bigger up front than they are, and we have to take advantage of that, and I think that's going to cause their secondary and the linebackers to start inching up, and when we they do that, we have to make them pay for it downfield. That's where some serious comfort in the pocket will pay off. Cruz, the tight end, redeploys to the right side. Hynoski comes in from the left, second and five at the 27. Back is Tino. He's going to run forward now, and he's going to be hit and hit hard at about the 25-yard line after a two-yard advance. Sets up a third and two. Everybody covered. He started running to his right, then he cut it up the middle, and in pursuit, Casey Smith, a defensive tackle, hit him pretty hard at the 25. It's third down and three. Well, they blitzed off the backside there, and we picked it up. He didn't see what he wanted. He had the tight end coming down the middle, but the safeties were converging on him, so he chose not to go there and tuck it and run with it and pick up some positive yardage. Inoski in a flanker position right. Motions into the backfield on third and three. Panthers three for five on third downs. Tino wants to throw it. He pops it over the middle. The pass is caught. And that is going to be a first down at about the 16-yard line to Mike Cruz, the tight end. And there's a marker down. Did he fumble the football? He did. And Gregory Hickman picked it up. That was not a marker. That was a fumble and a beanbag coming in. And Cruz is still slow to get to his feet. That was a huge hit. Great throw, great catch, taking the ball and trying to get up the field. 
but just a huge hit. Dave wants to talk about the safeties coming up and hitting you as good as anybody. And we're going to see in the Big East. We saw that firsthand there, and Cruz uh, injured, holding his left shoulder there, kind of real close to himself as he gets off the field. So now this play will be reviewed as Dillard apparently Previous comes play. up with a big hit. And the question is, was Cruz down when the ball came out? Here's a, After here's further a call. review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First and 10, FIU. So it's a fumble by Cruz and a recovery by Hickman, and FIU has the ball at their own 15. And the burden swings back to the Panther defense. The offense got a great field position effort on a 52-yard kickoff return. Then picked up 11 by Graham and 5 by Graham, but then Cruz fumbles, and here we go, first and 10 at the 15. Wesley Carroll in the spread for Florida International. Goes to the wraparound handoff, and Harden is hit quickly and hard at the 17 by Jabal Sheard, reading the run and crashing down from his defensive left-end post. That technically wouldn't have been in the red zone because we fumbled on that play right bill but again we get inside the 20 and don't come away with any points even though there was a fumble to finish off that play second down and eight at the 17 no huddle spread offense carroll the transfer from mississippi state barking with a sidecar to his right and he goes to the wraparound handoff again and this time good blocking up front and it's going to be close to a first down for Jeremiah Harden, the transfer from Syracuse. He's out to the 25-yard line. Tackled there by Jason Hendricks. The Red Sea parted on that play. Well, great movement on the right side, and they pulled the left guard around there. He had nobody to block well into the secondary. Harden followed him up. It looked like pretty close to a first down. Third and inches at the 24-and-a-half-yard line of FIU. They stay in the spread. Double slot to the wide side right. Protector to his left for Wesley Carroll. Carroll surveys. Sends a receiver in motion to the left. Gets the snap. Hands it off. And that'll be a first down easily for Jeremiah Harden. Out to the 30. Needed one. Got about six on the play. And a first down for Florida International. They are now 7 for 11 on third down opportunities. Tackled by Max Gruder from his middle backer post. Ball at the FIU 30, first and 10. Carroll, slot to the wide side left. Sidecar to his left. Goes to the wraparound handoff, and this time it'll be Harden using a stiff arm and getting up to the 34-yard line. And he's hauled down there by the Panther defender on that side, Brandon Lindsay, the junior from Aliquippa. Backside help from Dom DeSico. It'll be second down and six. Lindsay did a good job of fighting off the blocker, but as soon as he came off, Harden stiff-armed him right in the face and kind of jarred him back, but he still hung on for the tackle, but a pickup of four. Second down and six. Wide side of the field is to the right. They've got a slot out that way, and Harden gets the low shotgun snap, but he's erect, and now he starts to run a little bit. Wide open on the right flat for the first down is T.Y. Hilton, and he scampers near the bench on the far side across the 40 to the 43 for the first down for FIU. Reed on the tackle. Well, Carroll does a good enough job of buying time here. Fakes the guy out in the flat to his left, rolls back to his right. Not much of a pass rush by the Panthers there, looking a little bit ragged, and he finally finds the open receiver. Nine-yard gain out to the 43 and a first and 10 for FIU. Center Brad Serini from Highland, New York, out over the ball. The direct snap to Carroll. Wrap around fake, and he throws the ball, and it's complete in the left flat, and running around and being pinballed is Wayne Times, and Times is going to be hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain. It'll be second down and 10. Great recognition by Max Gruder. They faked the handoff up the middle, tried to hit the back out in the left slot there kind of like a screen a quick screen but Gruder was right there to stop it in its tracks second down and 10 Carroll looks to the sideline gets the play call from Mario Cristobal and his staff Panther lead is 13 to 10 but FIU on the march at the Golden Panther 43 they motion a receiver to the right that's the wide side it's overloaded and they roll the pocket right and Carroll looks 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 waits 
Now there's late pressure, and he throws it to the far sideline, and stepping in there to break it up on Greg Ellingson is the Panther defender right in front of Cristobal, and that's Antoine Reed. It's third and ten. Coach once that said this spread reminded him a lot of Utah, and they're doing a great job. Zero sacks for this Panther defensive line so far. Carroll rolls out to his right, and our guys are kind of standing there flat footer in pursuit, but of no issue. But he finally tries to throw the ball away at the end. Now FIU does the scramble drill, and uh, there's a whistle and a stop in the action. They, they halt the play clock at 10 seconds. The game clock at 9.14 was already stopped. And let's see why this delay. The referee is Chuck Lewis of the Sun Belt Conference, and he's going to now huddle up with his fellow officials, including umpire Bill Lampkin. Was it a spot problem that uh, was singled out by the uh, FIU bench? I'm not sure. No, that's the ball's on this this hash mark, not the far hash mark. After the incomplete pass, they had mistakenly put it on the right hash mark. Now they have it on the left. Third and ten, empty set. Wesley Carroll back there by himself, awaiting the direct snap from Brad Serini. Now he changes the play at eight on the huddle clock. He goes back into that shotgun empty set, barks away, and runs the play. He's back. Pressure. And he throws it in the flat, and it's incomplete. Great late pressure. I believe it was Jabal Sheard getting in there to kind of put an arm up and cause that incompletion. I think he caused Carroll to kind of throw it awkwardly. Incomplete. And the punt team is on for the Golden Panthers of FIU. Cruz lines up to the left side of the formation. Tino breaks the eye to the left side. That's the wide side, and that's where Baldwin is. And Tino's back on a handoff, and the blitz was picked up as Graham comes up over the 35 to the 37 for about four yards. A nice ball fake by Tino. Carried it out well as he handed it off. Wilson, the right defensive end, made the stop for FIU. Good block by Henry Hynoski, who picked up the blitzer there to allow Ray to pick up the four yards. Second down, six, the Panthers from there, 37. They lead it 13-10 with eight and a half minutes to go, third quarter. This late start on this October afternoon. They give to Graham, and Graham against the blitz is going to run into a sea of humanity, and the pile is going to get to the 38 for one yard. That'll set up a third down and five. The Panthers on third downs now are three for six on the afternoon. And you couldn't give a tackle on that. There were so many white shirts around the football. Smith and Pound, the tackles. Williams and Wilson, the ends. And backside help from the backers. And also, I think I saw a couple of safeties in that scrum. Third down and five. The Panthers from their 38. They send Shanahan into the slot right inside Devon Street. Baldwin isolated with a defender out in the left area. Baldwin gets the call. He gets the pass, and he comes forward for the first down. Spins away from the grasp of Cheeseboro, the cornerback, and gets the necessary yardage up to the 45. Needed five. Got about seven on that play. Baldwin was hand fighting. Good protection here. Graham does a good job with the DB there. He just pulled that in with one hand, his right hand, as the other one was kind of pushing off the DB there. They were hand fighting again. I mean, I'm looking at the replay. This is all one-handed by Jonathan Baldwin. Randy Mosk like. First and 10 at the 45. High formation. Tino to throw on first down. He's going to heave it down the field and it's going for Baldwin and it's going to be out of bounds incomplete. Almost intercepted. It was overthrown for Baldwin. And the defender, weak side backer, Anthony Gator, came up with the ball as he went out of bounds near sideline at about the 18-yard line. It's second down and 10. Yeah, Tino just kind of reared back and let this ball get up there and get as much air under it as possible. And he found a mismatch there, what you would think would be a mismatch, Jonathan Baldwin, but kind of threw it more out of bounds and give a... FIU credit. I mean, he was step for step with Jonathan. Jonathan never really able to make a play for that football. Let's see what the Panthers do on second and 10 from their 45 with a slot right. And a draw handoff. And Graham is going to be hit as he gets maybe a yard up to the 46. The white 
clad defenders are all over him, including Cyprian, the free safety, and Fraser, the middle backer, who's their third leading tackler. And now it's third and long for the Panthers. We've been expecting to see this defensive line walking around trying to create confusion. And I know they like to do it a lot on third and long. This is a perfect opportunity. I don't think we've really seen them do much of that today. Create confusion on the offensive line part. Then ultimately that comes back to haunt the quarterback. Third down and nine from the 46 in pit territory. The Panthers four for seven on third downs. Tino in the shotgun is back. Has a little time now flushed out of the pocket throws it on the run the pass pulled in by Baldwin and they're going to say no that's Devin Street on the near sideline at about the 44 yard line. Now they're going to say even deeper than that is it's going to be a first down it would appear. Yes it is a first down as they spot the ball at the 45 yard line. He needed nine got exactly nine Devin Street a big reception. On well, third down. Good job by Sinceri, too. He felt late pressure coming off the backside. Pinkston was losing his man. Rolled further to the right there and found Street coming back to him. And they give it to Ray Graham, and he breaks through on the right side. Is it the 35? First down to the 30. Inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. A 20-yard run by Ray Graham. Cyprian ended the play. Ray Graham got loose that time and had some good blocking to get him loose. Well, as this game has gone on, Tino Sinceri has gotten a little bit more comfortable and been able to keep drives alive. And on this play here, it's just a true power play. Pulling Jacobson from the left guard spot gets great movement on the front right side there. But especially Gibbs and Lucas Nix. And I really like that combination is working well today. The new one for the offensive line. 147 yards rushing for Graham. 21 on that play to the 24. Graham gets the call again. He sidesteps to the right, and he's not going to get anything at all. He was in the grasp of the defender, the middle backer, Winston Fraser, and he couldn't turn it upfield. He might have lost half yard. It's second down and long. I think we're going to see Cam Sadler coming in here right now create some excitement. Second and ten. And it's a long ten. Just inside the 25-yard line. Tino now will go shotgun. Trips left to the wide side for the Panthers. And Cam Sadler among those trips. And there's movement by the right tackle. And that is Jordan Gibbs. Nope, that is the right uh, tight end. And that is Mike Cruz. Right of the snap. Ball start offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Procedure call against Mike Cruz. And the Panthers, another pre-snap penalty. They had uh, six of those in the first half. Yep, number seven. Anytime, it seems like every time we get now near the red zone there, we get a little bit antsy. Don't feel comfortable. Panthers have seven penalties, all pre-snap. And that's the third on the offense. Second and 15 at the 29. Almost the 30, so we'll call it. The 29 and a half. Broken eye to the boundary right. Tino wants to throw it. Big rush. Screen pass right. Here comes Graham. Cuts it inside a man. But they got his ankle. And down he goes at about the 27-yard line for a two-yard gain. Cyprian had his ankle. Boy, that was close to being a big one. Great job by Sinceri to hold on to as long, long as he could there. Found Graham right out in the flat. Just looked like. Yeah, that was Carabin. If he could have just got out there a little quicker and maybe cut that guy off, it would have been a much bigger game. Third and 12, the ball at the 26, and they've got to try to get at least in the field goal range to extend this three-point lead. Ball on the right hash. Tino in the gun. Panthers on third down, five for eight in this game. Devin Street motions right to the boundary. He's back. Four-man rush. Tino throws to the sideline and catching the ball, but down on one knee for a short gain is Devin Street. He had room to turn up field because he had a cushion, but when he went to turn, he slipped and the knee touched at about the 21. It's fourth down. Figure will snap. Ginoco will hold, and Hutchins will be trying a 38-yard field goal. On the season, he is 7 for 10. The snap is down. The kick by Hutchins on its way. That kick has the leg. It's high enough. And that kick is good. His second 38-yarder of the game extends that Panther lead to six points. First and ten. Working the spread. Wesley Carroll. With a sidecar to his left. Gets the snap. Wants to throw it. 
Fires it over the middle. Crossing pattern. The pass is complete. And that's going to be a first down up over the 20 to 25 to Greg Ellingson. Big target, a senior out of Tampa. Tackled by Dom DeSico after a 13-yard gain. Yeah, he got inside Greg Williams. Greg got out of position there. No pass rush. Nobody really to obstruct the view. And he just made a crisp dart right across the middle. Now they go on the quick count. And they spring a running back on the wraparound. Up over the 30 to 35 with the football. That's Mallory. And he's got another first down up near the 45-yard line. Run out of bounds by Ricky Gary. They sealed that left side. And the Panther defender got trapped inside. And that made the wraparound draw work as they ran it to their left, yeah. to the 44. Lindsay got way upfield on that one, created a natural hole there, and it ran right through it. And in the spread again, late pressure. He's going to be sacked only the second time this year for quarterback Wesley Carroll. This one, courtesy of Chaz Alexi. Chaz, with three sacks coming in, was tied for the national lead in the sack department. He makes another. Well, he just keeps fighting on this one. Finally comes free. He wanted to, Carroll did to unload this ball down the middle, but there was nobody there. And finally, Alexi got to him and threw him to the ground. 12-yard loss to the 32. It's second down and 22. He'll stay in the spread. Wesley Carroll empties the backfield. Gets the snap. Throws the quick screen, and it's dropped. And it didn't matter because the blue shirts were all around. The intended receiver, Ty Frierson, Jabal Sheard, may have gotten a piece of that ball, and it's third and 22. Well, great job by Jabal coming in there to pressure Carroll, but also Miles Kerrigan was right there. He was trying to throw the crossing pattern coming underneath, but Miles Kerrigan sniffed it out. It was kind of spying back in coverage and did a great job out there. Panthers leading by six. Dig in. Third and 22 for Florida State at their 32. In the spread, Carroll, the quarterback, wants to throw it. He's back. And now there's a referee throwing a flag as he throws the ball into the bench on the far side of the field. And I think this is habeas grabus by somebody on that right side up front. Was it Brian or holding. was it Davis? He was holding Open. Miles Kerrigan. 77. Well, it Penalty was will be declined. Cedric Mack. Cedric Mack, a senior from Torrance, California. The starting left guard was holding Jabal Sheard. Penalty declined. Punt team on for FIU. They rule the ball out of bounds at the pit 39-yard line. A 27-yard punt by Brisk. And the Panthers start at that point. A minute 12 left of the third quarter. Pit leading by six. Ray Graham gets the call off the right side. Fakes out a man. Turns it upfield. Up over the 45 to near midfield. Is tackled there. But that'll be a first down run. Let's go to the field. And John Seibel. John. We shouldn't be surprised that the running game is getting going like this. Because if you look at the matchup in the trenches. Pitt's O-line has every single man outweighed on the D-line for Florida International. By an average of 20 pounds. When asked about his line. Mario Cristobal said quite frankly. They're playing, playing well. But quote. They're probably being uh, put in there well before their time but they've made the commitment to develop he says they're young but they got to learn Panthers go on the quick count Graham is hammered in the hole crosses midfield gets down to the 48 for three yards and they came flying in there to get him down that was Toronto Smith the strong side backer their second leading tackler Graham's okay he bounces up Graham did a great job on that last play to not only pick up the first down but also hold on to the football because as he was pulling one of the defenders down the field he was reaching in trying to yank the ball from him great job to recognize that and great ball control by Graham this could be the final play of the third quarter Tino breaks the huddle sets him up in an eye with 10 seconds to go Krabs Hynoski to the right play action fake wants to throw it throws it to the near sideline the pass is pulled in by Baldwin a, no Devin Street with a great grab and a first down to the pit 32 yard line Devin Street the 6-4 product of Bethlehem Pennsylvania beat Anthony Gator the weak side backer on that play and Tino hit him beautifully well great job by Hynoski and also Ray Graham to pick up the blitzer and allow Tino to make a heck of a throw, but Street once again comes back to make a good catch and keep his feet in bounds. 16 yard gain to the 32, and that's the final play of the third quarter. At the end of the third period, the score the Panthers 16, FIU 10. Sweet Caroline is humming up here at Heinz Field. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network.
Panthers have the ball up six. First and ten at the Florida International 32-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. Tino throws the ball down the field. That's Shanahan. He's got it inside the ten, and he's down at about the seven-yard line. Mike Shanahan on a crossing pattern right to left, and Tino hit him beautifully. And Tino, by the way, as the Panthers enter the Heinz red zone, is ten of his last eleven. Exactly, and he's thrown the ball with so much more confidence right now. Great protection, and Shanahan catches this ball in stride, perfect rope, tries to sidestep the would-be tackler there, almost does, but he does end up falling on the shoestring tackle, but great throw. 24 yards, and now first and goal at the eight, and they try Ray Graham off the right side, and not much going on, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. By the way, as the Panthers enter the Heinz red zone, the red zone is a drug-free zone brought to you by Drug-Free Workplace Solutions. Building a better workplace, one employee at a time. Panthers got to come away with something big here. They've had three consecutive drives where they've moved the ball up and down the field. Only have three points to show for it right now. Back in the red zone, need six. Actually, Graham loses a yard there, so it's second and goal at the nine. Wide side to the left. But the Panthers overload the boundary right. And now they bring Shanahan out as a flanker left. And a play action fake. Tino rolling left, dumps it off in the flat. Running at the five, the touchdown. Henry Heinowski hammers it home on the pass play from Tino Sanseri. Great call. Totally out of the blue. We haven't seen that play all year. Rolling to his left. Very uncomfortable, finds Henry Hynoski, which is usually the blocker, after they fake the power to the right, wide open, chugs it in for the touchdown. And on the scoreboard, I see Mike Ditka signal touchdown, then I see Dan Marino signal touchdown. They've been hard to come by today, but Henry Hynoski pulls it in from nine yards out, and the extra point team is on. The offense, number 12, Penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. Touchdown pitch. What happened was Tino Sinceri went and touched the hands of a couple of the students in the student section. Or was that Henry Hynoski did that? Well, Henry Not, did that. But they that called it on it. Tino. What, what was that all about? So that'll be enforced on the kickoff. Here's the extra point try by Hutchins. It's up and through. And the Panthers get that lead into double digits, and they've had to work hard to do that. We have 13.39 to go. The Panthers lead it 23-10. Great execution on that touchdown. I mean, Hynoski, you know, they faked the power, got the defense looking to our to our right as Vincent Seri rolled to his left. And great job by Hynoski sneaking out in the flat, catching the ball on the run to take it into the end zone. And Henry has to sell that play. He had, he can't tip it that I'm going to sneak into the flat. So he's got to make an initial movement to his exactly. right and then come against it. Quarterback Wesley Carroll runs that spread offense. And now the challenge falls to the pit blue-shirted defenders. He changes the play and backs in to his shotgun slot. And he's going to run the wraparound handoff, trying to bounce it outside and doing so effectively through a hole. And look out, that is Mallory. And Mallory got loose as the Panthers couldn't quite get to him. And he turns it inside to 35, the 30 to the 25 yard line, tackled there by Dom DeSico. This play just goes and goes. He just hangs back there. Looks like Miles Carrigine was get, tr getting held, but no call. And then all of a sudden, he just finds an opening and darts out there. I, I refuse to believe that there's no holding on that call. Yeah, Miles Kerrigan, they might as well would have hogtied him on that one. And there's the trainers out there. And uh, are there two players down in front of the bench on the far side of the field or just one? And who is that? Can we identify that player? It is a uh, FIU player. Purchase four new qualifying Cooper tires and get great performance and up to a $50 rebate by mail for qualifying tires. Terms and conditions. Visit Smiley's Tire in Aliquippa, Laurel Gardens Tire Service in North Hills, or Ambridge Wholesale Tire. The injured player is the ball carrier, Mallory. 
who scampers to the 25-yard line for 22, first and 10. Panther lead is 13 points, but threatened right now. Pitch shows blitz. And they fake the wraparound handoff. The pass throws down the field, and it is caught at the one-yard line. And that's a first and goal at the one. Greg Ellingson got between defenders. Ricky Gary, one of them. And it's first and goal at the one for FIU. Throw the ball straight down the middle of the field. Well, they faked the handoff to run the same play. The power to the left there. No pass rush whatsoever. Perfect dart in between Holly coming over and Ricky Gary on the coverage. 24-yard pass play after a 22-yard run and now first and goal at the one they stay in the spread and they go to the wraparound fake and the no they nailed in the back field is Darriot Perry it was not a fake Brandon Lindsay squashed the ball carrier for a three-yard loss Brandon's had a few opportunities today on this particular place guessed right a couple times wrong a few here he guessed right came up with the tackle Two-yard loss to the three, second and goal. In the spread, Wesley Carroll. FIU on the march. He looks to the sideline. Steps back in with a sidecar to his right. Gets the snap. And he's going to hand it off. And running into the end zone around left end is Darriot Perry. His second touchdown of the game and his fourth of the season. And he looped around Brandon Lindsay on the far side. Yeah, Brandon got great penetration, but just got frozen in his tracks right there wasn't sure if this was a handoff or not if he would have just kept coming up field and not bit with the quarterback thinking it was a fake this would not have been a touchdown field position a problem now Panthers start from their nine to get a fumble on the snap and fortunately the Panthers fall on it but they lose a yard and now down in distance starting to favor the FIU defense actually they're going to spot the ball at the seven yard line after that fumbled snap so it's second and 12. Panthers have to overcome these mistakes. Panthers break the eye to the left. Tino barks. Wants to don't draw a handoff. And trying to get forward is Graham, and he's going to be trapped for a loss back at the six. It's third and 13. Good job by the defender. Isham Fashan, a freshman from Slidell, Louisiana, to grab his leg and not let go. Yeah, it was, uh, they had eight in the box up there. Graham had nowhere to go. Give him credit. It was a good tackle. Panthers a little conservative, I think, on that. You know, and again, when you're inside the five-yard line, you tend to be a little conservative. Third down and 13. From the Panthers six. Tino. Out of an eye formation. Back to his goal line. Waits. Waits. Runs to his right. Now he's going to throw it on the run. The pass is caught. And the Panthers get a first down out of it. I do believe it'll be a first down at the 20. Terrific job by Ray Graham to never say die. He had people on his right. People on his left. People on his back. Grace is uh, the guy given credit for the tackle. He needed 13 and got about oh, 14, 15 on the play. Well, Tino couldn't find anybody. Great protection there. Buys time by running to his right. Opportunity to run with the football, but he has a sense to see Graham out there. Finds it to Graham, and Graham makes a great run. The last yard in particular to pick up the first. Out at the 21. Panthers go eye. And they call Shanahan into a tight bunch left, and they toss it to the left. And Graham turns it inside a block. Still on his feet up over the 30, the 35, the 40. He's on his way. There goes Ray Graham. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. A marker down on the play. Where is the marker? It is down deep. It is down deep to our left toward the end of the play. Boy, there's been some phantom calls here. How could there be a call down there in the left side? He was, Nobody was open. He there. was free and clear. What did they see behind the play? Here's Chuck Lewis. Delay of game. Sideline interference on the offense. The five-yard penalty will be enforced on the try. The touchdown is good. 
a sideline interference. And I know what happened. Coaches and players come out to watch Ray, Grum, Ray Graham run by them. And you don't call that. Not if you, not if you are calling the game in a sportsmanlike way. And I'll just drop it at that. Yep, and, and also on that, I failed to mention, Henry Hynoski made a great block here to spring Ray Graham into the end zone. And now 24 carries, 237 yards, two TDs for Ray Graham. Pretty impressive day so far. He's a happy young man on that pit sideline, but the uh, unhappy man is head coach Dave Wanstead, who's pretty much seen it all. Extra point try from the 15-yard line. A 25-yard field goal is up and good by Dan Hutchins for one point. And the Panthers extend their lead to 30-17 to with a lot of time left, 9.43 to go. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. And I think we were losing that game before he busted out in the second half to gain most of those yards against Syracuse. You're, you're correct. Them. From the 22, they run the fake, and the Panthers run up Carroll's back, and down he goes at the line of scrimmage. Brandon Lindsay from his defensive right end post just completely ran up Wesley Carroll's back as he tried after the handoff fake to keep it and turn right in. That's good closing speed by Lindsay, the junior from Aliquippa. Second down and 10 from the 22 for Florida International. Now, uh, an audible. He communicates the audible, does Carroll, and steps back in with a sidecar to his left. And Dariot Perry. And he hands off to Perry. And Perry tries to turn the corner and does not. Jabal Sheard sticks out that left arm and spins him down. That wasn't Perry. That was Darian Merrill. Merrill. Mallory you got a Darian Perry and a Darian Mallory who tried to turn the corner and Sheard said no yeah they could have called holding on that one there I mean they've been very quick to throw him at us very reluctant to throw him at Florida International but Jabal still fights off the block to make the play third down and 12 empty set Carroll by himself awaiting the direct snap from Brad Serini from his own 20 He's back, steps up in the pocket, wants to run, and throws it complete, but only for five yards into the hands of Mallory. Tackled very quickly on the play by the Panther defender, uh, getting up and saying thank you is Max Gruder, who has just uh, come on and done a great job of getting better and better with each snap. Who was down behind the play and getting up slowly? Brandon Lindsay. Panthers have the ball, and they give it to Ray Graham. And Graham, behind Hynoski's block, has to do a little zig and zag. And gets about four yards down. Well, they're going to call him down at the 42. Gets three yards down to the 42. Tackled there by backup defensive tackle Jericho Lee, a freshman from Tallahassee. Well, this is where Dave wants to have always said, you throw to score points, you run to win football games. This is exactly the situation you're talking about. You got a little under seven and a half minutes left. You'd love to eat the clock away and come away with some points and put the team to bed. If IU knows that, they got a lot of people in the box. They pinch Baldwin from the left. Little counter fake, rolling right. Tino dumps it off. Henry Hynoski is uh, cartwheeled. They're getting low on the tackle was Ashlyn Parker, but Hynoski does pick up positive yardage inside the 40 down to about the 36. Be third down and a short one at that point. Do you blame him for going low on Henry? No. Henry. I, I don't think you want to take on that wide body at 260 pounds. Third down and one. That was a similar play except to the other side as a touchdown Henry caught. Here they just got upended a little bit flying in from the uh, inside out to lose his balance. And the give is to Graham and Graham is going to be hit and dropped short of the lead stick. It's fourth down and decision time for the Panthers. The ball at about the 36-yard line of the FIU Golden Panthers. So it's fourth down. And what do you do? Too long to try a field goal. Do you go for it and just turn the ball over here and wind clock? Or do you wind it down and call a timeout with about two on the huddle clock? Let's see what they do. Six on the game clock, 14 on the huddle clock. Pit up. 30 to 17, fourth and one at the 36. Tino 
under center. He's going to toss, sweep it to the right. Ray Graham is through the hole and a first down and more. And he's inside the uh, 30 down to about the 27-yard line. That is power football, ladies and gentlemen. Well, went to that new, newly configured right side with Licks at guard. Nick's at guard and Gibbs at tackle. They do a good job. Gibbs does a pulling out there, kicking out his guy. Graham gets enough of a crease there to pick up the first down. Jordan Gibbs, I've seen him pull in the past. He's very athletic. That's a play that's ideally suited for his uh, big body athleticism to go out there and blow up some cornerbacks. Think about Ray Graham's day at the office 347 total yards. That is unbelievable. He picked up uh, about nine on that toss sweep to the right first and ten at the 27. Graham gets the call again. Knife through takes on defenders. The Paul the pile falls to about the 20 for seven yards. And now the Panthers are digging in with Carabine, Nix, Jacobson, Pinkston and Gibbs and they're just driving the white shirts off the ball. Well, you know, we've talked about the fourth quarter today. This offense has made it a heck of a lot easier on the defense coming into this fourth quarter with the way they've taken control of the line of scrimmage and the clock and the scoreboard here in the second half. And they're having their way right now with this Florida International uh, up front seven who's doing everything they can knowing what's coming at them and still can't stop it. You're looking at a top ten performance. Rushing yards in a game, and Graham gets a call again. Breaks it off the right side. He dances into the end zone from 20 yards out. Ray Graham puts a little cherry on the whipped cream. <laughs> Carroll in the spread. Throws the pass. It is pulled in. And the Panthers make a nice diving tackle on Greg Ellingson, and that is Andrew Taglianetti, but it is a gain from... Uh, what are they going to call it? Second and two, so it's an eight-yard gain. Second and two at the 33-yard line. Again, Carroll in the gun with a sidecar to his right. Gets the snap, has time. Uh oh man up his back, and the ball is knocked around. Beanbag thrown. It's fumbled, picked up by the Panthers. That is Jabal Sheard, and the Panthers play takeaway with a beanbag down. <laughs> Now there's a flag. Okay. I can't tell the oh, difference it's hard between to tell the beanbag and the flag. Well, let's see why the beanbag is uh, not down and the flag is. Is that going to be a hold against FIU? Greg Lu or Chuck Lewis, the referee, will explain. Well, I think he's going to explain. Well, I don't think it was a flag. There was no flag. It was a beanbag. Well, we have to we have to decide the difference between a flag and a beanbag. Well, Let's make one blue and one, uh, you know, like a, a fluorescent color. Well, like, great job by Lindsey coming off the backside to create that turnover. Jabal tried to scoop yeah, it up. Is challenging the field of a fumble. Oh, okay. So with nothing to lose, Mario Cristobal is teamed down by 20. Is going to issue one of his his challenge for the game. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First and 10, Pitt. FIU has exhausted their challenges. And they have one timeout remaining in the second half. I'd say they're between a rock and a hard place. Down 20 and the ball at the 16-yard line. First and 10 for the Panthers. And everything in tight. And Chris Burns is going to dot the eye behind Henry Hynoski. Burns, the sophomore from New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. That's not Hynoski, that's Chris Mike. And Burns gets the call and goes into a sea of humanity. Gets about two yards down to the 14, and the clock winds to 325. Well, you got to feel good about the way this team progressed during the game. You know, you can start with what I thought was the critical part of the whole game, the key to the game. That was Tino Sinceri, Bill. He didn't come out very well, and we'll all be <laughs> quick to point that out. 
But Jack, Jack Lippert is now at center. Redshirt freshman center from Harrisburg at 6'4", 275. Sorry, Billy. Yeah, and they're high on him, too, by the way. So it's good to get him some experience. They really think he's got a bright future inside there. Second and eight. And again, Burns sidesteps one defender, takes defenders on, and gets inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. And he's tackled there by Kenneth Dillard, who had a big play earlier to jar a football loose from the grasp of Mike Cruz. A lot of backups in there now for the Panthers up front, but they're still doing a job of pushing the visiting Golden Panthers back on their heels. Six-yard gain by Burns, third down and two, the ball. At the eight-yard line. Panthers have 290 yards rushing today. Very close to that 300-yard mark. Can't remember the last time that would have occurred. Wow. That's that's a ton. Third and two at the eight. Sanceri's going to hand it off to Burns, and Burns puts head down, and I don't think he made it. There's a marker down at the line of scrimmage. So let's see why the marker is down. And... I still have no preliminary indication. Huddle up between Chuck Lewis and his official on that side who threw the flag. So let's see what the infraction is. Offside. Offside. Defense number 55. First down. The penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal. The result of the penalty is a first down for Pitt. You mean they can go offsides too? How many yards rushing did you say the Panthers have? 296. So if they go over 300, that would be the first time since Ironhead and company did it against Kent State in 1999. Would that have been Ironhead Hayward? No. No, not, not that late. That would have been Kevin Barlow huh. against Kent State. Ironhead was in the 80s. What are you thinking about, Billy? First and goal at the four. Straight ahead goes Chris Burns. Goal line touchdown. Chris Burns, the sophomore from Wilmington High at 5'11", 200. Pounds it in, and there's a player down for FIU. Well, you could just see the physical nature of this Panther offensive line just begin to wear down in the second half and take control. Ray Graham and company, and uh, now Chris Burns, good to see him get an opportunity to get in the end zone, and I think that should take us over the 300-yard mark. For the first time since 1999. A lot of celebration on the pit sideline. And the injured player receiving attention at the point of impact. Down near the goal line as Burns pounds it in for the Panthers. You didn't think this was going to happen, but happen it did. Thanks to Ray Graham and company and a defense that just kept coming and coming in waves. Back is Carroll to throw the pass down the field. The pass is caught. That's a first down. Times pulls it in. Up over the 45 to the 47. Wayne Times, sophomore from Miami Northwestern High School. Taglianetti makes a stop for the Panthers. Clock winds to 109. FIU trying to gain a measure of respect here. And they go to the middle screen. And stumbling after the reception and crossing the 50 is Hedrick Rhodes, a freshman from Ocala. And he's going to be downed after he stumbles at the 49. So it'll be a first and 10 at the pit 49-yard line. He did stumble for the first down. And now Carroll wants to take off. He rolls to the left by time. Throws it down the field. The pass is off the one hand of the intended receiver. Incomplete at the 16-yard line. Willis Wright diving for it. Just can only get one hand on it behind Colby Gray. It's second down and 10. Incompletion stops the clock at 38 seconds remaining of the game. Panthers trying to even their record at 2-2. Two and two. And then they got a big trip to South Bend next week before the Big East Conference schedule presents itself. Second and 7. At the 40. No, it's third down now, right? Scoreboard fell a little bit behind. Third and seven. Yep, and a crossing route, and that's going to be close to a first down. As carrying the defender on his back was Jarris Williams, a redshirt freshman wide out at 6'5", 187. Kwan Williams makes the stop for the Panthers. It is a first down. First and ten at the pit 42-yard line. 
24 seconds and winding. Wesley Carroll is back. The Mississippi State transfer. Dances out of the pocket. Now gets hemmed in. Throws the pass. It's pulled in. Far side. Good juke. And a first down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line by Kedrick Rhodes, the freshman from Ocala. He sidestepped the defender. Tristan Roberts made the stop. 12 seconds left. First and 10. The ball at the 26-yard line of the Panthers. Now down to 10 seconds. Is this the last play? Carroll is back. Has plenty of time. He waits, he waits, he waits. Throws it for the goal line. And it's into and out of the hands of the intended receiver. At the goal line, Ty Frierson with two seconds left. It'll be second and ten. Colby Gray defending on the play. He just didn't squeeze it. Yeah, he had it in his hands. Give Carroll credit. Made the throw. Great protection. Nobody around him. <laughs> He had all day. So the Panther defense has to keep on fighting, albeit with backup people, for one more play. They'll go to the end zone, I would imagine. Younger, not younger, but uh, Carroll back. He throws a timing pattern, and nobody's there. The receiver pulled up. And that will fittingly end this football game as Carroll throws an incomplete pass. And it gives the Panthers a 44-17 win. We'll be back with more Panthers football on the Pitt ISP Sports Network. Thank you. Because of you, many of us have received scholarships. Because of you, I have a scholarship and I plan on studying medicine. Thank you. Because of you, we have the latest in classroom technology. Because of you, I have a great place to work out. Thank you. Because of you, I received the chair to strengthen the study of the new Europe. Thank you. Because of you, we're able to perform groundbreaking work on ALS, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and Parkinson's disease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because of you, because of you, we have scholarships. We have scholarships from pet clubs across the country. Thank you. Because of you, our campus is expanding. Because of you, I received a scholarship that has enabled me to continue working while earning my degree. Because of you, we established the Simmons Center, a leading center in research and treatment of pulmonary fibrosis. Thank you. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study business. Thank you. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study secondary English education. Because of you, the School of Law is taking giant steps in training tomorrow's lawyers. Thank you. Because of you, I have a scholarship to study psychology, and I get to study in this beautiful library. Because of you, I received a scholarship to study political science. Thank you. The Cleveland Cavaliers are bringing back